Well, so to say, it's been a bit of a mixed reaction about me going to Spurs. I think it's going to be even more mixed when I say that it's a North London derby today, and for the first time on the channel, I am not on the Gunners' side. No room for sentiment, though. Things are about to get a little heated. Yes, hello there, viewers. Welcome to another episode of Matching Mourinho, where we are at Spurs. Yay, Spurs. Hooray. I should be excited, okay? This, is, this isn't this is fair on anyone that is actually a Spurs fan watching the channel. There probably aren't many of you. But yeah, it, it feels a little bit unfair that I'm constantly berating the fact that I'm now manager. In all fairness, actually, we've made a pretty decent start to the league. We've won four out of five games. Uh, and today, actually, if we beat Arsenal, depending on what happens with City, we could actually go top of the league. So, yeah, yeah, I know. And that's because since the first game of the season, where we beat Sheffield United 4-0, as you saw, we beat Palace 4-2, beat Gamarash in the Europa League uh, qualifying section. We actually lost in the second leg, but went through on aggregate. Quite a difficult group, uh, but like draw, to be fair. Gamarash are a pretty decent team. We did lose 3-0 away at Craven Cottage, which was a bit... Strange, I'll just say strange. Uh, then we've bounced back though with a 3 0 win against Wolves, and more importantly, a 3 2 win away at Anfield. A very impressive game and performance from us. The, uh, they had pretty much double the shots, but actually, XG wise, ours was just as good as them. We had a very, very good game. I was very impressed with a lot of the players in there, and you can tell there's some brand new names. And this is why I had to skip past the Liverpool game, as well as the fact that I had my first game in the Europa League 2, which we don't need to worry about too much. Um, and that is that we've had a pretty busy transfer final deadline day because three players left in Harvey White for 29 million, Ronaldo Ronaldo for 27 and a half and Pedro Gonçalves for 23 and a half million. So we bought in a fair amount of money and then we did actually spend a fair amount as well on three new players. One of them is an experienced player, Jules Kunde, who you all know. Uh, got him in on loan from Paris Saint-Germain. Obviously, very well-rounded, very experienced centre-back now at 30 years old. Uh, has been there, done it, won trophies with PSG. Kind of knows what it takes to get over the line. Very, very solid player. Got lovely attributes everywhere. Mentally, is very solid. Physically, still very good as well. Nearly his peak. He's a little bit short for a defender, which is what I am slightly worried about. But his heading is pretty good at 16. Uh, his passing is very good at 14. Marking 15, tackling 15. He's a very well-rounded centre-back. And he's not quite ready to go into the first team yet, but it's only a matter of time. I make it actually four players we brought in, not three. We'll, we'll say that. My like Kunde one, I didn't count him. Uh, but welcome, Rodrigo Guad... Gajardo. Gajardo? Guajardo. I think is what we're going to call him. Wow, uh, is all I'm going to say. Got a mint. How much do you reckon I paid for him? 5.25 million is the answer. And he's got a very good goals to game record. 25 goals and 13 assists and 59 appearances for Colo Colo. Uh, Colo, Colo, Colo. Uh, don't mind. Don't do it. But yeah, he's a very good player. You can tell here he's got absolutely explosive acceleration and pace. Acceleration at 18, pace at 16, agility, balance, 17s each. Finishing, dribbling, both at 16, technique at 16, work rate at 16, flair is 16. Everything that you'd want in a forward, he has an abundance. He's only 19 years old. Chilean, international as well, I might add. He's going to be... Very, very impressive, and one definitely for the future. Keep an eye out on him. I could see him being in the first team lineup, not this season, maybe next. But someone that will fit straight into the starting lineup is Hudson Henrique, who's got a, a brilliant name, and second of all, brilliant attributes all around the board. He is just so well rounded. The ones that stand out are 19 passing, 18 techniques, 16 teamwork, 16 decisions. 18 balance, well-rounded, all physically very tall as well, 189. He's a big central midfielder. Uh, 16 first touch stands out as well. 15 dribbling is good. Long shots, free kick taking. Anything in football, this man can do. And he's already made a very impressive start to his uh, career as a Tottenham player. Played two games for us, got one goal already. Played at 7.25 in both games. He is mightily impressive, and I bought him for only £19 million. Pounds. I bought this... For nineteen million pounds, his leadership is the only thing that lets him down. Literally the only thing. But the biggest outlay was on Mattis Smet, and the reason why I spent so much is very similar to the reason why I brought Guajardo in. Uh, he's insanely quick, 
I mean, like the physicals alone are enough to get you excited. Just look at the pace on that. The agility is 18, balance is 19 is great. Off the ball, 18, makes really intelligent runs, good composure, great dribbling, good finishing, uh, decent technique. Work rate could use a little bit of work, but to be fair to me, he can play on either wing. But I'm playing him as the advanced forward. He likes to beat the offside trap, likes to hit the ball on his left foot. Very, very solid. Already got a few goals for me as well this season. He's playing very very well and I expect him to get a lot of goals from me over the coming years a lot of goals so that's it really and I've, I've still managed to save uh, 17.57 million pounds I've made a massive profit we're now up at 98 million pounds in the bank overall that will obviously grow uh, if we can get ourselves into decent position in the league which at the moment we are doing like I said we're currently sat in fifth just outside of the top four, which is probably the aim is where we want to get to. A Europa League isn't the worst place in the world either. That you know, that's where I think originally where the board actually want me to finish uh, is that they just want me to where is it? Oh, they want me to qualify for the Europa League, which at the moment we are doing. And I think a top six finish is more than achievable. City are playing Everton. Like I said, if we go into this and we play well, there's a chance that we can go top if things go our way with Everton v City. So this is pretty much nearly, apart from Jude Bellingham being out, is pretty much as strong as my first team can get really now. Maybe also you could say Kunde uh, should be playing instead of maybe Pai or Parola. But at the same time, those two seem to be striking up a pretty decent combo at the back. Uh, Bogdanovic is in goal. Harwood's on the left. Pai, Parola and Almaraz make up the rest of the back four. Then you've got Zilic in the ball winning midfielder position. He's been very good so far as well, playing kind of underneath the radar. His rating doesn't suggest it, but he has been very good. You see it in the games. Uh, Santalo's been... Santalo, he's amazing. Uh, Hudson Henry, like I said, is going to be partnering him up. Rainier is in excellent form as well. He's got five games in his last three appearances. Uh, Smet and Parrott are up front. So I'm feeling pretty confident, in all fairness. Arsenal are just ahead of us, I believe, in the league. I'm feeling pretty confident about this game, but they've got some very good players. They've got Yao Felix. He just follows me everywhere. They've got Yao Felix, Fabio Vieira. We all know he's good. Benaka's good. Uh, Declan Rice, Tomiyasu, Ben Godfrey. They've got some very decent players. Bakayo Saka is still there as well. And Albon Lafont as a backup goalkeeper is not bad. I'm going to say that I expect to win. I do expect to win against our North London rivals. This is probably the biggest game of our season. Uh, it usually is, obviously, when we do play Spurs. Uh, oh my god, see, I've got mixed mixed allegiances already. When we play Arsenal, sorry Arsenal fans, sorry Spurs fans, sorry everyone. Arsenal languishing at the moment, down in ninth position. We are obviously chasing uh, a potential Champions League spot as it stands. Zilic gets on the ball and it looks like we're going to have the first highlight of the game. As Smet wins a good header there, now into Troy Parrott. Parrott out to Hudson Henrik. I mean, just watch this guy, he's so good. Henrik out to Almaraz, Almaraz on the ball. Go on, lad. Whip it in. That's a penalty. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Chris Cavagna, it looks like he's given it as a pen. We're appealing it. They're not particularly happy about it. It looked a pen. It looked like it. And he has awarded it. Basically, touch anyone in the box, and it's a penalty. Here we go. Controversy already to start. Hudson Henrik, I think he's going to take it. He's got brilliant penalty taking. Hudson Henrik buries it. Get in, lad. 1-0 to the Spurs already. Oh, don't hate me, Arsenal fans. Great finish, and it looks like uh, looks like City have just taken the lead as well, so we won't be going top, but we are going second as it stands. They've got William Saliba. I mean, that's going to annoy Arsenal fans even more. What's he not doing it? Got to say, it's been a pretty decent start, really, from us, though, to be fair. We have been the better team, really, but Arsenal moving the ball in here as Benaka finds Lazinski, who gave away the penalty, back to Benaka. He's a good little player, that lad. Lazinski whips in, but Zilic heads it away. Told you, underrated, really. The ratings don't tell you just how good he's actually been for me, but that's a great ball to Lazinski. He's going to be wanting to make amends for his tackle that gave us the pen. Benaka on the ball. Come on, boys, just win it back. Hudson Henrik does win the ball, but he's lost it back to Benaku. Whips it in. They've given it away. Santalo heads it clear. Smet is rapid. You're not going to catch him. Once he's gone, he's gone. Smet on the counter attack. Bruce Tomiyasu. Smet, brilliant tee back. Can't believe he's missed it. Smet should have just hit it. I can't believe Renier's missed it. I cannot believe he's missed that. What a run by Smet, though. He is absolutely unbelievably quick. He's just got pace for days. Arsenal, though, do look like they're threatening from set pieces as Tom Yasu heads it. So, heads it. God, that would be a very low header. Uh, slaps it just wide on the volley. Been a game of few chances. Um, and at the moment, we're, we're kind of very even. Separated by one rather daft moment from Lazinski. They're playing quite a defensive formation, though, to be fair. They've gone three at the back. 
well, technically five at the back if we push our blokes on, um, our fullbacks. So they should really be exploiting these areas on the wings, but it's just not happened for them so far. And really, I can't be too disappointed. I mean, it's been a very even game. We've had more shots, more on target. We've been arguably the better side going forward, but we haven't really made it count just yet. So, half time comes, told the boys I'm happy. But I do feel we're going to need to have a second um, if we are going to win this game. I can see them scoring. Just as I say that, there is a highlight here. Uh, Vieira gives the ball away to Harwood. That was outside the box originally. It was outside the box, Cavanna. Come on, mate. Come on, Chris Cavanna. Come on. It was outside the box. You know it. Is it Cavanna or Cavanna? No penalty. He's given us no penalty. But Harwood's having a bit of a hard time down that side. Vieira's given him a little bit of the runaround. And... Um, I expect a little bit better there. But I believe Harwood is a local lad, so this is going to mean a lot more to him than it will to the majority of the players. We are playing better. We've had a lot of shots and just not really finishing them. Uh, Troy Parrott has not had his best day. He's going to come off. I'm going to bring Bates on. Um, I'm going to move Smet into that centre uh, centre forward position. I'm also going to take Andy Harwood off. I'm going to bring Driven on because Driven's pretty decent on either side. So he's going to come on. Hopefully he'll have a little bit of a better game than, than uh, Harwood has because he's looked a little shaky. The player who hasn't looked shaky is Hudson Henry because he plays another ball back to Parola. We're just kind of just playing around with Arsenal a little bit here. We look like we're in control. I just need to make sure that nothing stupid happens here. Bogdanovic into Pai. Lovely ball back to Zilic. We're sucking Arsenal on here. <coughs> Pai, lovely flick around the corner there to Zilic. Back to Pai. Go on, lad into Driven. We're moving them around nicely now, Arsenal. They're not really sure where they're going. He's Driven darts around his man into Renier. This has got to be a good pass. He shoots. It goes miles wide. Not a good effort. Not a good effort. I'm going to make one change, and that's that uh, Luis Gileme is going to come on. He's going to go into the deep line playmaker role. Hudson Henry, he's going to go on the box-to-box -box role, I think, because I can see him being able to thrive in that role. He basically can thrive in any role in the midfield. He could genuinely be crucial this year. I was lacking a really top quality central midfielder because uh, Jude Bellingham, I've moved him further up the pitch, so to have Hudson Henrique in there now makes such a massive difference. I feel like I can actually control games a little bit when I've got him involved and so far he's doing exactly what I bought him for and it looks like we're going to get away with a 1-0 win. We really should have scored a second with that Smet chance, but it's a game of few chances, but most important is that we do get a win in the North London Derby, especially at home. Make sure we tick the boxes, get it done, get it dusted, and we go second in the league. Mightily, mightily impressive from the boys. We've got Man City up next away. I know I could play Newcastle game, but with me going through the transfer business and stuff as well, I feel like this is probably going to be long enough for an episode. And we're not going to win the league this year, okay? I don't think we're anywhere near that. So let's not worry about that too much. What I need to really worry about is getting to that next level and anything in terms of like the European fights. So what I'm thinking is let's come back for... Um, yeah, well, I don't really want to involve the Europa League too because it's not really something I need to worry about too much. So what we'll do is we'll have the games against Brighton and Newcastle. Uh, I know they're obviously not the biggest teams in the... Uh, in the Premier League. But at the same time, they're two very difficult away games. Every Premier League game is always exciting to watch. And away from home, we're also quite um, hit and miss. Sometimes we can be brilliant. Sometimes we can be terrible. So it's a bit of a gamble to watch that. But hopefully, we'll all enjoy it. Like I said, we've made a very decent start to my time here at Tottenham. Um, what do you think of my transfers? Are you happy with the addition? I think I just need to look at him again. Just look at Hudson Henrique again. Where is he? Just look at him. He's so good. He's only 18. He could be anything he wants to be absolutely anything he wants to be I, I'm just so excited it's unreal says he's playing close to his potential no chance absolutely no chance thank you so much for watching this episode of Match Mourinho I hope you've managed to enjoy it sorry Arsenal fans if you have then please do drop a like on the video even if you haven't please do drop a like on the video please um, share and subscribe don't worry not every game will be in North London Derby um, but I'm enjoying it so far actually we've made a pretty decent start I seem to be doing quite well this year on FM21 and I don't really know what's happening um, I'm a little scared we're always used to be bottling it so don't worry there'll be plenty of that especially with Spurs but thanks so much for watching please remember to like share and subscribe and until I see you again take care of yourselves everyone and stay cool